So last time on Jerry McFarland, a rebel with a cause, Jerry had to do some doo-wop to convince a bunch of people at a junkyard that he wasn't a demon. And then he found out there is an actual real demon right around this small Louisiana town. And he also uncovered that his old flame still has a flame for him and his brother's missing and his parents abandoned him. And I think that about sums it up right there. All right, let's go ahead and pick up where I left off now. That man is evil. His aura is dark, through and through. Did you hear the cats hissing? Yeah, <laughs> you can't miss it. They always do, whenever he approaches them. Somehow, he must be involved in the murders. Well, he is the FBI agent investigating them, so he is involved in the murders, so why am I pretending there's more nuance to this game than there actually is? The FBI agent is totally evil. Cats hiss at him, for God's sake. You don't get much more evil than that. Well, short of a robe and a broomstick, but that's not coming yet. So anyway, old Wiki here informs Jerry that he needs to find his Tolem animal, which is totally a hopey thing. Yeah, Tolem animals. Now, you may be thinking this is going to be some coyote-inspired dream, sequence where you find a coyote in the woods and run around shirtless for a while but oh nope 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 you don't do that at all instead you try to pick up the only interactable animal in this whole game and it's that cat that hangs out by the trash he your spirit guide or whatever and also by coincidence he hisses near the fbi guy so kind of like a double whammy so really, why do we even need a whole Tolem animal thing? But oh well. Jerry need to steal a cat from a dumpster. And how are you going to do that? Well, let's go rewind the tape and give an old listen to Luna now. You know the cat that hangs out here likes bacon? That's why she's always crawling into the dumpster making lots of noise. I always put some cat food next to it. But all she wants is bacon. That's why I have to lock the dumpster. So apparently Luna throws away a lot of bacon. I, I don't know what to make of that. Seems a little strange that that's a problem she has. Where her dumpsters floweth over with bacon. I don't know, maybe it's a Jewish diner. But apparently not, because Ted, who was playing on the pinball machine, orders a whopping helping of bacon because he hates his heart. Uh, special egg, please. And don't forget the extra bacon. What? No Demon X chili today? Maybe later, Luna. Demon X chili? Yes, Jerry. It's so hot, it exercises every single demon out of your body. Why does he suddenly change his voice like he's a southern preacher? And now with the spirit of the Lord flowing through us all, I'll stop doing this accent and just get back to the game. So Jerry waltzes over to where the twin is feasting upon his pile of bacon via his psychic powers. Not knowing they're worried about demons in this town. Am I right? Well, anyway, Jerry just can't flat out ask for the bacon because it ain't gonna happen. And he can't ask Luna for the bacon because it'd be weird to ask Luna for stuff. I guess Jerry doesn't want to seem like he's poor in front of his lame. Even though he's probably really poor because it doesn't seem like he can afford to buy anything from the damn diner that obviously has prices on things he could use. But nevertheless, in order for Jerry to get the bacon, he's going to have to figure out a way to distract Ted. And how are you going to do this? Well, let's just let Jerry explain it to us all. Ted's car. It means the world to him. One little mark and Ted is immediately on the spot to polish it clean. Alright, I mean, it doesn't sound too bad. You just gotta figure out a way to make his car a little bit dirty, right? Sounds easy enough. Alright, let's go ahead and see what Jerry does here. Oh, oh my god, Jerry, why are we moving the handbrake and why are you put- He pushed the car almost off the damn cliff! Damn, Jerry must hate Ted! First he steals his money, now he tries to destroy his car! Yeah, yeah, Jerry, you might not know what the distraction is. You might not know. But anyway, now with the bacon unprotected, Jerry can steal some bacon, plop it down the ground, and then oh yeah, the cat's smart. It runs back to its hiding place after you place down the bacon. So basically, you gotta cover up the hiding spot with items you find, like this little soundboard that was in front of the diner, and then a the little coffee machine that was in front of the little dumpster. And now Jerry can finally pick up the damn cat. And with it, he can figure out where the FBI agent went by using the cat on the northern little point. And yeah, the cat starts hissing, so obviously he went north or to where? Let's let Jerry explain it. Judging by the hissing cat, he likely went this way. The motel is this way, as far as I know. So let me get this straight. You wouldn't think to check out the hotel. The place where people who are not from this town would spend the night at. Like, say, an FBI agent who's been sent down here to investigate a bunch of murders. You know, Jerry's right. The only way I could possibly conceive of figuring that one out would be to get your Tolem animal, feed a bacon, and have it hiss in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. All right, we at the hotel now. Daddy FBI man. 
That's really all we need to know. Yeah, he totally has a hotel room. Yay, we figured things out. So now we go back to the shaman. And he's like, yo, I got a little bit more plot to tell you, son. God damn it, where is the stupid letter? Oh yeah, in case you forgot, Jerry's parents left him a letter that apparently has like a shameful, terrible secret in it. And Jerry just doesn't know where he put it. Because he seems to be pretty bad with the damn mail. I wonder what happens to his bills. Where do you usually keep things that are important to you, Jerry? Hmm. I'm on tour a lot, so I guess it's in the glove box of my car. Have you checked there already? Wait a minute. <laughs> you were right. It was there. So when Jerry says glove box, does he mean like his back pocket or something? Because it just seemed like he reached in his back pocket, blacked out, and all of a sudden the letter materialized. Or are we supposed to believe in that fade out he walked to his car? Even though it was pretty damn obvious he didn't move at all. Now you've witnessed my shame and power, haven't you? Totally makes sense. After all, only a shaman would tell someone to check a place that they normally keep important stuff for an important item. I don't think anyone else could have possibly thought of that one. Okay, Wick. I know where the guy lives. Now, I need the weapon. Here's the recipe from the letter, and some Yanto roots. And now Jerry has his quest that's gonna run for the remainder of the game, pretty much. And that's develop a potion and murder a federal agent. I know, it's like Jerry just joined a crazy death cult. I can't possibly see anything going wrong here, or ATF showing up at his door, or some weird Waco-style holdout at this diner. No, no, I don't see that happening at all. But hey, I shouldn't nitpick too much. After all, there's some pretty sound logical reasoning for why they want to kill an FBI agent. That's that cat, hiss at him, and he has an evil aura. I mean, that's pretty damn sound logic right there. So let's go ahead and see what ingredient we need first to develop this death potion. Hopi Yoni root water to keep demons at bay. A sacred Yanto root is thoroughly cooked and doused with black soda stock. Now Jerry doesn't need to worry about the root at all because the shaman's already given it to him. But as for the black soda stock, hmm, you wonder what ancient ingredient could that possibly be? Some sort of traditional herb? Perhaps something from an ancient tar pit. Oh boy, now soda, like there's bicarbonate of soda, maybe it's some sort of exotic and rare mineral, or it could just be a nice bottle of high fructose corn syrup infused soda. Soda water. Yeah, it's Coke that you get from here by using, well, Ted's coin. Yeah, it's just Coca-Cola. I had no idea that Hopi had access to Coca-Cola back in the olden times, because I'm assuming this is an ancient recipe that predates Europeans. Well, whatever, you give the ingredient to Luna, and you might as well give her the root since you're right here, and she doesn't really tell you how many ingredients you have. You're actually going to have to rely on Steam achievements to keep track of this or just have a good memory. All right, so with a couple of ingredients out of the way, let's move on to the next one. Hopi Yoni root water to keep demons at bay. A sacred Yanto root is thoroughly cooked and doused with black soda stock and the breath of a songstress. Oh, it's a breath of a songstress. I have that in my cupboard right now. Well, no, I don't. That sounds kind of esoteric and almost like something a serial killer would say. I just want to trap her breath. But nevertheless, Jerry does know where a songstress is. In fact, a doo-wop star. So he heads over there. Diane, your gig has been over for some time now, yet you're still sitting in your dressing room. Don't you think it's time to go home now? Whatever you say, Mr. B, I will not go home as long as the murderer is still lurking in this club. Oh man, we missed out on our chance of hearing some lovely live music. I'm sure she performed in front of a live audience of no one. Yeah, you know what, for a game that's about rock and roll, there is no music to be found in this game, other than at the jukebox. But nevertheless, Diane refuses to leave her dressing room because she's scared of the murderer. So as you would expect, it falls upon Jerry to coax her out of there. Mr. B, I wanted... To scare Diane out of the club. I'll do whatever I can to make her finally leave, Mr. B. But... I'll do my best, Mr. B. Come on, Jerry. This is your only chance to do the mightiest man in town a favor. So that he owes you. Ah, uh, fair enough. Well, that right there is about as subtle as a slap on the face. But hey, at least no one cannot accuse this game of signposting for you. And that scared Diane out of her room. Hey, you even get a nifty kind of fallout-looking gauge to the top right to tell you how scared she is. It's locked. Mr. B, can I enter the room? There might be something useful inside. Okay. You know where to find the key. 
All right, Jay's gonna need to gather up some essential items to scare this poor woman out of her room. You think you could just say, yo, I'm the murderer and I'm gonna come after you with an axe, but nah, the shining hasn't been made yet. So yeah, let's go ahead and watch Jerry get the items he needs. Could be useful. It's an item you can pick up in an adventure game. Odds are it's gonna be useful. Although there are some red herrings in this game, so credit where credit is due. You don't see that much anymore. Oh, right, with the key in the cloth, Jerry has all the items he needs from that area. I know it's kind of surprising with this area being so big and having multiple rooms and everything, but nope. There's absolutely nothing else you need other than the stuff that's locked away in the basement. So let's go have Jerry do that already, and oh my god, what type of sycophantic stuff is down here. Oh, there's some obvious references to Doctor Who. Oh, the Cyberman head. Oh, we got the little police box there. Oh my god. You make me sick, developer. I mean, like any sane person, I only care for the dumb baker years. Everything else, <sighs> am I right? So yeah, Jerry just picks up anything that isn't nailed down down here. And now he has enough stuff to scare the poor woman out of her dressing room. But first he has to make a spooky scary ghost by combining the cloth with a stick he found in the basement. Great A special effects right there. I shouldn't be too harsh. After all, it's the 1950s. You can get away with having pie tins attached to fishing line back then. Alright, let's watch Jerry Van Moose. What the hell? Are you sure you're not the demon, Jerry? Because you just kind of defied a bunch of laws of physics right there. But all right, let's go scare the woman now. A ghost! Are you kidding me? Diane! Who? Who is it? Mm, let's see what other shadows I can make. A ghost! Alright, now that we got her fallout fear factor maxed out, we can go ahead and use the broom on this little section of the basement. And yeah, that just terrifies her so much she runs away. And we never ever see her. Yeah, it's almost like the developer didn't want to make a character model or something like that. But oh, well, Jerry makes his way up into the dressing room now. And oh crap, there's some mints up here. And sure enough, that is the item we're looking for for a potion to kill the demon. Yeah, it's the voice of the songstress, mints. I guess there's no convenience stores around here. Thank you. What about the other ingredients? So, we got the breath of the songstress, the black soda, the root. What else do we need, Jerry boy? A parental secret. Oh, that's nice and vague, but oh, wait a minute. Didn't Jerry have a letter on him earlier that was from his parents, and they said it was all secret and it was terrible, the secret? Oh, let's watch him open it. Hey, how come my father's old seal ring is in this letter? It never left his finger. It strikes me as odd that he decided to send it to me. Let's find out why this letter is so important. Hello, Jerry. We know that we didn't take care of you both the way you deserved it. We are terribly sorry. Believe me when I say that we love you very much and that we always wanted the best for you. We would love to be there for you. But as you read this letter, we know that something has gone wrong and that maybe we will never be able to be there for you ever again. We would rather have made a different decision and enjoyed a long and happy life with you, our sons. There are things in life, however, that we cannot simply ignore things we have to take care of so you both can live long and happy lives. We can't be there for you in person anymore. However, there might be a way we can help you. Take your father's seal ring, Jerry. If you ever find yourself in dire straits, it will lead you to one of our biggest secrets. You surely know what to do with it. After all, back in the days, you disturbed your father often enough when he was smoking. Remember? Use this secret wisely, though. Tame your curiosity. Lift the secret only if there is no other way. Because this secret could be both helpful, but also very dangerous. We love you, Jerry. You and Bobby, Mom and Dad. Oh, man. Now I've got a lump in my throat.
<laughs> All right, I guess it's good for Jerry to know that his parents weren't dicks and they didn't abandon him and his brother for no good reason. Although they're still pretty vague about those reasons, but whatever. Jerry makes his way to the pawn shop because believe it or not, Jerry's brother Bobby apparently hawked the family humidor. I know everyone in this family apparently broke and need to sell stuff for money. So yeah, Jerry uses the little ring he got in the letter, opens up the humidor and finds a pool ball. Which he just takes because the pawnbroker's too scared of murderers or something like that to leave his damn room. So with that in hand, Jerry makes his way back to his family house. The Chuck. The what? Oops. Wrong game. Ah, references. <laughs> That's Monkey Island or something like that, right? right? That's what they usually say reference. Oh, well, all you need to do to scare away this little dog here is take your totem animal out of your back pocket and place it down in front of it because that's how you show respect to your spirit, guide. You have it be chased away by a dog. And then all you need to do is waltz Jerry over to this pot over here, pull up the key, use it out of the door, and BAM! We get some backstory to Jerry's past. So, here we are again. Here I experienced my greatest triumphs and greatest defeats when I was a boy. Here I used to miss my parents when they toured with their jazz combo. The place where I defeated my dad in an epic billiard battle and won three rare albums. I love vinyl. Oh, it's the 50s. You have no choice but to love vinyl. But carry on. Man, when I was little, I used to be so proud of my achievements. (sighs) <sighs> yeah, I know that feeling, Jerry. You've been crushed by the world. You got no accomplishments. You're getting older and feel like every day is going to be more of a struggle than the last, with no hope of anything other than sweet death after an agonizing odd 70 years of existence. Oh, I got a little personal there, didn't I? All right, with that depressing note out of the way, Jerry walks into the only room he can walk into in this house. And it's the bar slash billiards room because his parents were cool jazz cats. And oh my god, look at all the stars. There's so many of them. And yeah, this is the most stars that are in any room in this game. But do not be intimidated. All you need to do is walk upstairs, look at the picture of his family, and conveniently, they're holding pool balls. Hmm. One of them number three, one of them number two. Why, Jerry pulled out number two out of that humidor. So number three, it's on the table and he picks it up and then all you need to do is mess around with this statue here, remove the chest, I know, boom and joke and place the balls there and it opens up a secret passageway. That's complicated. The Secret Society of Lowers? My parents were members of a secret society? How come I never knew? Uh, well then it wouldn't be a secret now, would it be, Jerry? Huh. Maybe that's because it's a secret society. Oh, okay, you are kind of self-aware game. All right. I'll let you have this one. But yeah, that's the parental secret right there. And that's all you need from this house. I know, it looks like there's meant to be a letter on this table, but now it don't matter. That's just there for decoration. So anyway... Jared makes his way back to Luna and gives her the thing. And she just keeps telling him the same thing over and over again. Thanks. What about the other ingredients? What indeed, Luna? What indeed, Luna Lee? That's her full name, apparently. I just now caught that. Well, we'll find out next time, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, because we halfway there now through the list. So let's go pick up the remaining items in the next video, part three of my over-analysis of Johnny Barden, Rebel with a Cause. Did I get it that time? Oh, well. Hopefully I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.